Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to ask, but individually, is if there is anything extra that you could label without assuming anything or making anything up. Okay, so for number one, anything addition that I, additional that I could label? Donovan, what do you think? Yes or no? Number one, yes. Any, no? Okay. Do I agree with that? You don't agree with him? Is there something else I could label? What? What could I label? Based on not, yeah, you go ahead, Ricky. Why? Vertical angles. Okay, everybody turn in page 42 in your eyes and Forty-two. And I want you to look at the front of page 42 on the bottom, and I want you to read the de definition of vertical angles. And then I want you to look at the examples of vertical angles and non-vertical angles. And then I want you to decide if you agree with Donovan or if you agree with Rigo. Rigo, who do you agree with? Who do you agree with? Yourself? Okay, so what, read me the definition of vertical angles. Okay, so how many lines would it take to create these two angles here? Oh, look at look at what I have. I have one, two, three. So do you still agree with yourself? Kinda. Okay. So look on page forty-two, on the bottom right, um, where you have those four different sets of angles. You see this angle three and four on the right-hand side. Isn't that the same situation that we have up here on the board? Yes. Are these vertical angles or not? No. Those are not vertical angles because it does not take two lines to create them. And when we did this, when we were doing these notes, I said to you, there are going to be times when you want to call things vertical angles and they're not. This does not take two lines to create them. Therefore, these are not vertical angles. So there is nothing else that we can label legally that we know for sure. Again, I'm not saying that these angles for sure are not congruent. They very well may be. We just don't know if they are or not. So given what we have here then, do we have enough information to prove these triangles congruent? No. So it is not possible. Okay? We good? All right. So on number two, I want to know if there is anything additional that I can label from Gabby. Is there anything... In case you didn't know, that's you. That's you. Um, on number two, is there anything additional I can label? Okay. And how do you know that's true? Okay, good. So I have to write out that line segment PL is congruent to PL. And the reason that we know that is that that is the reflexive property of congruence. Okay, everybody okay with that? If it is not something that is flat out given to you, you have to say, you have to write out what is congruent and why. Okay? That's way better than doing an entire proof, I promise you. So, and I know, again, there's not tons of room to write on here, but you could write in the margins and draw arrows if you need to. Um, I think there's, I tried to make the pictures bigger because I was shrinking this down and then I didn't realize I took up all your space. Okay, so, um, I have, the, I have two sets of congruent sides and then I have, this angle here. So do I have enough information to say if these two triangles are congruent at this point, Anthony? Tony. Do I number I'm on number two. Do I have enough information to say that the triangles are congruent? By what? Okay, Tony, there is no ass in geometry. I'm sure about that. You got your notes out? but they're open to a blank page. That doesn't really help you. Okay. So look at that. Find your side side angle. You see how you have a circle with a line through it. Okay. 
Okay, is that angle included in the two sides? No, it's not. Okay, so use your notes that are right in front of you. Open up your little doors and see if you can find a situation that looks similar to this. Okay, hypotenuse leg. Do y'all agree with that? Do you agree with that, Tony? <laughs> no. We just got to look inside of Tony's brain, though, and his thought processes. But. Okay, so hypotenuse leg. Here's the thing with hypotenuse leg, though. Remember that it has two letters, but there's still three things that you have to have in order to use it. Okay, you have to have a set of congruent hypotenuses, a set of congruent legs, and what? A right triangle, okay? So, is this right here, what does this label mean? 90 degree, a right angle, right? So, that is what they're telling me, is that this is a right angle. From that, I can conclude that I have a right triangle. Does that make sense to you? I'm not being told that I have a right triangle, because if I did want to use side angle side, and I really wouldn't care that it's a right angle. I'd care that they're congruent. So when you're given the right angle, you have two different directions to go, and you have to decide which one, which one you're going to do. Either you're going to end up saying that they're congruent, which we don't really care about here, or you're going to say that you know that you have a right triangle. In this case, since we want to use hypotenuse leg, I have to be able to say that I have a right triangle. So before I can say that I can prove it congruent, I have to say that I have right triangles. So I need to say that triangle KPL well, PKL, because I wrote my P first, and triangle PML are right triangles. Now, the reason, the justification that goes with it. Well, we know they're right triangles because there's a right angle in there, right? And that's what defines it as a right triangle. So my reason for that is just the definition of right triangles. Okay, so that has to be written there as well, or you don't have enough information to justify it. So those of you that are just sitting there looking at me, are right, Michael, are you telling me you already had that all written down? Okay, what did you do? Okay, so you can do that, but you have to have it written out all correctly. So you said PL is what? What did you? What were your, what were your reasons there? But how do you know that? You have to have a definition, a postulate, a theorem, a property, something to back that up. And if you don't know what that is off the top of your head and you can't write that down, you can't go down that road. If you cannot justify everything that you are saying, you cannot use it, period, end of story. That does have something that goes with it that you can use, but if you didn't use it, then it doesn't work. Yes, sir. No, there's no third side theorem. KL is congruent to LM because PL is the perpendicular bisector, but you have to know to use the perpendicular bisector theorem um, and that was in section, I don't know what page that's on. We have it. You can use it, but if you're not going to remember what to say and how to use it, then it's not going to do you any good. If you look on page 54, it's the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. So if you could say PL bisects KM by the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem, then you can say that KL is congruent to LM by the definition of a bisector, then you can say that the triangles are congruent. But you got to be able to say all that. Does that make sense? This was a lot shorter and a lot easier for you to remember and understand. Either one of them is fine, but you have to be able to justify it. You have to have a, something to back up what you are saying every single time you say anything. Yes, if, if, you were, if you were to go through all that to say that these two pieces are congruent, then you could use side angle side, but you would have to say that the angles are congruent because all right angles are congruent, and that's fine. 
Like I wouldn't, you wouldn't even need this. You don't care that they're right triangles at that point. So then yes. And so there are different ways to approach some of these, but you got to make sure that you are actually justifying it 100% every single time. Okay. And if you don't know the name of the theorem or the definition or whatever, then you might want to try a different way instead of making, trying to make it more complicated. Okay. We're good. Any questions? All right. Because there's nothing wrong with that. You just got to make sure that you're using the correct reasoning there. Yes, sir. I just told you it's on page 54, so you can look it up. All right, page three. I'm not page three. Number three. Um, so I want to know: Is there a um, is there anything else that I can label that isn't marked already, Catherine? Okay, good. So I can label that these are congruent. Then I have to name them. So can I say angle Y is congruent to angle Y? No. Okay. So I can say angle W Y X is congruent to angle A, Y, Z, or Z, Y, A. Either way is fine. And then my reason for that is if they're vertical angles, then they are congruent. So now with that, do I have enough information to say that they are congruent? Nina. Very good. Yes, because of the angle, angle, side. Now, could I have taken this farther and then used angle side angle? Yes. I could have that after you say this, then you can say Z is congruent to X by the third angle theorem, and then you can say angle side angle. Now, again, that's doing more work when it's not necessary. It's not wrong. It's fine to do. But the order in which you say things is very important. These two, it doesn't matter which one I say first. Here, the first thing I say can't be third angle theorem because I don't have two other sets of angles yet. Does that make sense to you? So sometimes like I would have to say this before I could use the third angle theorem. The order matters in that because I noticed on one of the assignments that I graded that some of y'all were using third angle theorem as like the first thing and then you would tell me another set of angles is congruent. It can't go in that order. Okay, we good? All right, good job. All right, number four. Is there anything else that I can label that I don't already have? Elijah. Okay, and how do we know that? Good. So KH is congruent to KH, and that is the reflexive property of congruence. Okay. And then do I have enough information to prove that the triangles are congruent? Miguel. Oh my goodness. He's that I can Hey, Fernando. Okay, so how do, um, where's your right triangles? So is this angle here included in these two sides? Remember that included part is important. So these are my two sides. This angle is the non-included angle. This would be my included angle. All right, so the idea of included and non-included is very important. And I've had people today already say to me, well, couldn't I go this way and say side, angle, side? Remember, it doesn't have anything to do with how you go around the triangle. It's whether or not it is included, okay? So side angle side isn't going to work either, Fernando. So do you have enough information? No. We have two sides in the non-included angle, right? And if that's all I have, can I say that they're congruent? No. Okay, so, and again, I am not saying that they are not congruent. I am saying it is not possible to prove that they are congruent based on what I have. All right, you have a question? To say these two are congruent? How do you know if the lines are parallel? Okay, so, all right, now look. These two angles here are congruent, right? If I look at this and this, and this is the transversal, 
since these two alternating triangles are congruent, that does make these lines parallel. That doesn't have anything at all to do with these angles right here. In order to be able to say these angles are congruent, I have to know that these sides are parallel, and I don't know that. Does that make sense? And as soon as I draw this out like that, that helps people, because that's very good that you're thinking that way. Okay, that is good. You need to be able to think outside the box and not just think about just the triangles. In this case, that, that doesn't help me, but that doesn't mean it wouldn't at some point. Um, but do you see how I, when I extended it, kind of made it make a little bit more sense? And I told you when we started that, that if, if you have anything that's enclosed and you're thinking parallel lines cut by a transversal, extend them and make them into lines so that you can see what's going on. Because this whole thing here is congruent to this whole thing here, but these little sides are kind of in the way, so that doesn't really tell me exactly what those are, because those could be at any angle. Okay, does that make sense to you? Okay, that's, that's, so that's a good thought, yes, but that still doesn't really help me, so that's good. Good job. All right, number five. Is there anything extra that I could label? Lizbeth. Okay, good. Very good. EG is congruent to line segment EG by the reflexive property of congruence. Okay. Then, can I, do I have enough information to prove that they are congruent? Nathan, yes, by what? Side, angle, side, good. And so make sure you can understand the difference between, you've got this included angle here and here it's not included. So they're like right next to each other if that's confusing for you. Okay. We all good? All right, next one. Is there anything else I can label that is not already labeled? Mirabella. Okay, AB is congruent to BB. And how do I know that, Mirabella? Good. That's the property of congruence. All right, so then do I have enough information to prove that they are congruent? Eric. Yes, by what? Side, angle, side. Do I have to say anything else first? No. No, he's a convert. Okay, so does this mean that I have congruent angles here? Does this mean congruent? What does that mean? It doesn't mean congruent, does it? What does it mean? What does this mean? No, what does just this little box here mean? Okay. So I know it's telling me that this is a right angle, right? And that does that mean that this is a right angle? Yes. So are they congruent? Yes, but is that what that label means? No. So in order for me to use side angle side, I have to be able to say that I have two sets of congruent sides and a set of congruent angles. So I, it is true, but then I need to say it. So can I say angle D is congruent to angle D? No. But I could say angle ADB is congruent to angle CDB. And then, that's because, why? Who can tell me? We did this on Friday. Look at your notes from Friday. Look at the examples we did. Because what they're telling me is that I have right angles. I then know that they're congruent. Look at the examples from Friday. All right angles are congruent. All right angles congruent. That's the right angle congruence there. Now that you've said, they gave me a set of congruent sides, I have another set of congruent sides, and I have the included angle, so I can prove them congruent using what? Side, angle, side, does that work now? Yes. Could you have used the perpendicular bisector thing here too? Yes, as long as you've written it all out correctly. But I don't have time to talk through that one right now, so we're gonna have to move on. All right, number seven. Is there anything additional that I could label? Ellie. Yes. And what is it? Oh, good. Good. TV is congruent to line segment TV by the reflexive property of congruence. So then, is that enough to say they are congruent? Cameron. Yes, by what? 
angle sliding. Everybody good? Any questions? Yes, if you want to say that angle U is congruent to angle S by the third angle theorem, you have to have this, though, because if, if all you do is the third angle theorem, then you just have three angles congruent to three angles, and that's not enough. But yeah, if you want to use the third angle theorem, you'd have to state that, and then you could use angle, angle, side. So as long as what you have backs up what you put, like if you just put angle, angle, side after all this, then that's wrong because you didn't justify how you know that. But if you add that in there, that's absolutely fine. All right, so number eight. Is there anything that I can label that's not already labeled? Michael. Okay. Okay, good. So angle L and M is congruent to angle P and Q. And that's because if they are vertical angles, then they are congruent. If you just say vertical angles are congruent, that's fine. It's just a different way to say it. Um, all right, we agree with that? All right, good deal. And then, oops, do I have enough information to say that they are congruent at this point? V win. No? Okay, she thinks it's not possible. Do you all agree with that? Yes, no? All right, I only have two sets of information, right? Is there anything else I could label without assuming anything or making anything up? No. Um, so I was asked today, since this is bisected, does that automatically mean that this gets bisected? And the answer to that is no. Is it possible? Yes, but we don't know that for sure. So it's not possible to prove them based on what we have. Okay, we good? All right, then the next one. Is there anything else I could label Eliza? BD is congruent to BD. Why? Good. Reflexive property of congruence. Good. Thank you. All right. And then, do I have enough information to prove they are congruent from Santos? No, because we don't have any angles. Oh, no, no, no. He changed his mind. I don't need any angles. I don't need any angles. Right. Okay. Side, side, side. All right, so any questions at this point? Oh, thank you, yes. I know, my goodness. See if you're paying attention. Um, all right, any questions on these? So make sure that, because sometimes you're going to want to label things because you just feel like it has to be true, but you can't label it and you can't state it unless you have something to back it up. Okay, we good? All right, go ahead and glue that in on page 62.